Hey everyone, welcome back to Blue Ridge Silverhound. I'm your host, Sean, and today I hope you're having a great start to the week. Uh, this is, of course, the Monday Market Report, where we take a look at some of the more notable modern era graded coins to have sold on the secondary market. This is for the week ending May 31st of 2020. Well, we are here. We are at the pinnacle of the kind of like the the gateway to the summer months. Um, typically, just to kind of, you know, let you guys know how the summer usually works when you're in the coin game, is that a lot of the big time collectors, they begin to kind of focus on things that are not coin related, vacations and all sorts of other things with family. Um, you get the big idea. Okay, it's been like that historically for many many decades okay and um last year uh it, it was anything but typical uh we've seen quite uh quite a busy uh summer when it comes to numismatics and the overall market uh that surrounds it so i anticipate seeing the same thing this year it's a little bit different it's a little bit weird uh only because of uh, where we're at currently in the pandemic, um, it's not it's not over by any stretch, but you know people are heading back um, out into the world and things are starting to open up again. How does that play into the coin market? Well, we're going to talk a little bit about which coins that we have seen different new hot trends leading into the summer. Okay, are there such thing as hot moderns these days? Absolutely, but we've seen kind of a changing in the tide from what you and I over the past five years have seen just a, a an overactive, busy period of between 60s and 70s dated coins. Now we're starting to see a little bit more of a shift, um, but you're going to see that here. We're going to talk about some of the more hotter trending coins that are leading into summer, um, you know, and then it could be interpreted in any way that you want um, based off of the activity. But uh, it, it was quite kind of a busy week. It was more of a the quiet before the storm uh, because we do have the uh, the Long Beach sale hosted by Heritage Auctions happening this coming week. So you would think that people are going to hold back from actually spending, uh, but yeah. That wasn't the case this week. There were a few pretty high-profile coins out there that were must-haves in a collection. So, uh, before we go ahead and jump in, of course, I gotta do my good old YouTube thing. Don't forget to like if you enjoy today's content. Share the video if you, you know, want to. Uh, you're absolutely welcome. Um, if you haven't done so, subscribe to my channel. I know there's a lot of lurkers out there that just like to watch the videos. Uh, and that's all fine and good, but being a supporter... Uh, means a lot to me, especially during these trying times. Uh, I want to thank everyone for all the views and support, but we're going to go ahead and get started with all the heavy hitters for the week. We do have one eBay coin that needs to be talked about, and it's going to be this beauty right here. Uh, as we all know, the 2020 West Points are hitting the ground running. We have two releases. We have another one upcoming here really soon, but it seems to be that you know, people have forgotten about the 2019 West Points, um, but yeah, not all of them are completely forgotten. This one, this gem right here was actually sold on the 23rd, so it was just over a week, um, but this is a 2019 West Point Frank Church River of No Return Idaho National Park quarter. Now, this one right here is one of two of the finest graded of this type. Okay, it's a PCGS Mint State 67 plus. Um, this one sold for $3,995. Okay, there are a few certain select coins uh, within the 2019 West Point series of quarters that are undeniably still a must have. And it's more revolving around the registry set system. All right, people are looking for the finest graded material. And if you have two or three you know, active bidders that are kind of butting heads and going back and forth on some of these coins, then that justifies the actual price value, okay? So top pop coins are always going to have a market out there. 
Um, this one is no exception, and I would expect to see more activity on some of the other f uh, four or five West Point quarters for 2019. Uh, you know, if one hits the market as a top pop, you better believe that there's going to be some fireworks um, ahead of July 4th, by the way. All right, so we have this one here. Again, it's a Pop2 uh, eBay coin, so that's the first one there. The next coin that I want to talk about, and all the coins from here on out are all great collections. There were no other notable auctions to speak of for the week. Uh, what we have here is a 1998S Lincoln Memorial set. This one right here is a really nice variety, okay? If you have these 98, 99 proof sets, make sure you flip the penny around and make sure... It's not the close AM proof, okay? Um, contrasting to the Business Strike 98, 99, and 2000s, where you have the wide AM variety on some of those, these will sometimes have the close AM, where the A and M in America on the reverse are touching. All right, that's the variety that you're looking for, and it is the most valuable. Now, this one here grades NGC, perfect 70 grade Ultra Cameo, a very pretty coin, very red, very nice. Um, and this one is also a top 100 greatest modern coin um, piece out there. This one sold for $1,115.99. It's even got a courtesy signature from the, uh, I believe, author of that 100 greatest U.S. modern coins second edition book. I believe it's by Whitman Publishing. But there you go. That's the first GC coin out of the way. All right, so you can't have a Monday market report without at least bringing up a 72 doubled die number one, right? Am I right? <laughs> I mean, this thing is just a staple in the annals of coin collecting, especially moderns, that it certainly deserves a spot on the list. Now, this one right here is uh, extraordinary, and that is a PCGS Mid-State 67. It's a really high grade uh, doubled die obverse, as you can see. Uh, you can't really mistake it for anything else. You will go dizzy if you look at this coin for too long. Uh, but this one right here sold for $2,055 and 38 cents. A really nice investor quality piece um, that I would highly recommend owning if you have the means. Alright, the next one that we have here has always been a white whale in terms of high grade Lincoln cents. Now, this one, granted, is graded by NGC. It's a 1963D, the final of all of the Lincoln Memorials to ever achieve a 67 grade by a service. All right, PCGS had graded one of these about a year and a half ago, and that coin turned out to sell in excess of $10,000. Now, keep in mind, the NGC graded 67s are worth less than the PCGS. Um, call it just... You, you know, preference, you know, when it comes to graded slabs. But this one right here is still a low pop coin. And because of that, even in an NGC slab, sold for $3,125.25. Probably one of the last um, 1960s Lincoln cents that you could still sell for over $3,000 uh, at a 67 okay typically you would have to have a 67 plus or maybe a 68 and some of the other 1960s dates to get to that position not this one still a rarity at this grade all right so we have a really nice smooth silky looking 1950s lincoln wheat scent this one is a pcgs mint state 67 plus full red cac certified uh, the only really distracting thing about this coin is that carbon spot on the reverse. But that probably may not have been there when this coin was graded. So it's really hard to say. But uh, all in all, a really nice representative coin for the grade. It is a plus grade. So uh, it's going to exhibit extra qualities uh, about the coin that give it that extra bump. Uh, the strike is really strong on this one, by the way. So this one here sold for $1,131.75 on Great Collections. All right, so this one should be on every cherry picker's list. And this one is the 1944D over S over mint mark variety Lincoln Wheat Scent. I'm always tickled to see one of these on the list, especially at this level. 65 and up, I'm telling you, I'm going to be paying close attention to it. But this one right here is... Uh, 
quite a bit more than, than your average bear. It's a PCGS Mint State 66 Plus Full Red. I believe this is a top pop grade for this variety type. And it is also CAC certified backed. This one sold for $13,051.12. Sell it, buy a new car. <laughs> or sell it and put the money in a hedge fund or, or an IRA or something like that. Um, it's a lot of money and it's a life changer. And it is a game changer too. Um, this is one of the most popular, well-known varieties in the Lincoln Scent, you know, series. All right, so this nickel here, uh, as you guys know, is a wartime silver, okay? It occurs between 42 to 45. This one is a 43S, a really nice, clean example, uh, albeit it's probably um, got a little bit of toning in there. It's nothing, to, you know, it's going to knock your socks off. Uh, but there's enough on there to give it some originality. Um, the grade is extraordinarily nice, too. It's a 67 plus full stepper. Uh, nice strong steps on there. Pretty coin. Sold for $1,350. Uh, this is one of those marquee coins that um, are going to continue to be strong on the secondary market. Um, the wartime silvers have, have seen an uptick in activity in the last 6 to 12 months. Um, and that is more just a case of, you know, it's an interesting time in history. That's why the 43S Steel Lincoln Cent has been, like, trending up here in the last two to three months. Every time a sale comes up that's a high grade, those things take off. We're going to see these wartime silver nickels um, trend in that same direction. Plus, there is a myriad of various dye varieties to keep an eye out on. The 43 doubled eye, the 45 doubled die reverse are a few such examples of coins that are going to be um, placemakers in the series. Okay, the series is short, but there's a lot of challenge with it. All right, so we have a couple buffaloes and uh, we have seen a new trend here recently. Uh, I would say um, pre-pandemic, so within the last 60 to 90 days, of uh, common dated obsolete coinage in high grades. And what I mean by obsolete is a design that doesn't exist in coins anymore. So the 1913 to 1938 Buffalo Nickels fits that category really well. Now we have what is considered one of the more common dates in the series. Now this one also does exhibit a D over S over mint mark variety, all right? Um, they're actually quite common to find. With a little bit of searching, you could probably cherry pick one of these D over S's or D over D varieties quite easily. I found my fair share of them, and they go all the way up to mint state 65, 66, 67. I've seen them, you know, in an unattributed in high-grade slabs. Um, it's a really fun coin. Now, keeping in mind, again, the high-grade is the huge component to this coin and that's why it is so popular it's because some of the more rarer dates like the teens and the 26 s's are simply not touchable for the money so this is an ngc mint state 68 it's got a little bit of kind of like a light goldish overtone of color on there uh, but this one sold for thirty two hundred eleven dollars and 88 cents another popular coin again we even a, in a common date you know, type look, um, it is going to command the maximum amount of money, and I could only see these going up more as people begin to shift toward older coins, even if they have to sacrifice going into a much more readily available date. All right, and the same can be said for this 36D as well. Millions of these were produced. It is not rare to find one of these in a dealer case at a mint state 65 or 66 raw. All right, now this one right here, again, uh, it's a completely different breed. It's a 67 plus CAC certified. Again, this is going to be one of those kind of bread and butter type coins going into the second half of the year. All right, people are going to be looking for top end common dates, stuff that they can easily cherry pick, whether it's online or a dealer or a show, turn around, flip it. Uh, turn it around, you know, grade it, flip it, and then make quite a bit more money on. Now, this one right here, uh, you know, with the toning and the CAC certification, 
sold for $4,051.12. And it just seems to me that we're beginning to see more of these, again, obsolete type coins so and common dates. So the 30s Buffalo Nickels, 1940s Mercury Dimes, uh, what else? The uh, Walking Liberty Half Dollars, like the 1940s, especially the s -mid ones, which are a lot tougher to find in those high grades. These are all coins that are gaining huge amounts of traction on the secondary market. If you got these coins in high mint state status and not graded, okay, this might be a prime opportunity to cash in on what is becoming kind of like a new trend, all right, in which everybody's throwing as much money as they can to them. All right, another trend out there is um, wildly toned coins, okay? They just don't fit the mold with Morgan Dollars anymore, okay? It can be any denomination. Of course, we probably have one of the least popular um, coin series in recent memory, and that's the Roosevelt Dime. This is a 51S, albeit it's a little bit tougher date um, compared to anything else around it. Uh, the grade is top-notch, NGC Mid-State 68 star for the eye appeal, and it is a full torch, fully struck example. So it's got the nice struck bands on the top and bottom. That's what you're going to look for. But this color, this coin has tons of color, okay? Uh, on the obverse, I would say it's some of the most beautiful uh, arrays and uh, just various different types of toning. Um, uh, you know, Roosevelt has kind of like a, a miniature galaxy on the top of its head. That's, that's what I find most appealing about this coin. Uh, but this one right here, uh, again, is another beauty. It is also a Sunset Collection piece. Sold for $1,299.38, proving once again that extremely attractive toned examples of coins, it doesn't matter what they are, commands a huge secondary market. All right, so we got a beautiful one here. And um, strangely enough, great collections had sold a number of top graded 1945s with the micro mint marks uh, this week i would say there was probably five or six and they all sold for about you know like two to three grand uh but this one right here stands above and beyond the rest because of its plus designation now it is a 67 plus with full split bands it is also the micro s um it's got beautiful toning it's got some of that steel gray um toning that is very very appealing i love this color uh this one sold for eight thousand four hundred ninety four dollars and eighty eight cents the micro s in retrospect again is another variety that's not particularly hard to find um in high grades all right so this is another cherry picking opportunity that i would keep an eye out for all right, so this is another beauty right here. Uh, this one is um, not like anything else. Okay, the, this one this one is a, a rocket ship. It's a 42 over 1 D Mercury Dime. Um, this is one of the marquee varieties uh, for the early 20th century. Again, this is a coin that people want to cherry pick at this grade level, um, but so few have actually succeeded. This is a Mint State 65 plus full bands coin from PCGS. CAC certified, and this is the top winner out of the group, selling for $29,251.12. Bravo. Really nice coin. All right, so it's hard to follow <laughs> a Mercury Dime much like that, and they go to a National Park quarter. So what's the backstory with this thing? Well, it's a 2018 D, Apostle Islands, Wisconsin State Park quarter. Um, the grade, it's all about the grade on this one. It's a registry set, uh, bomb by any sense, but it's Mint State 68 through PCGS. And this one sold for $815 and 62 cents. Um, definitely a coin that, you know, <laughs> if, if money was any sort of consequence on here, um, just be careful buying these stunning high graded moderns like this. Um, you just never know where it's going to land one day. Okay, so we have a couple Washington quarters here. Uh, a couple more, actually. We got 62D, always a tough date in high-grade mid-states. Uh, this one's a 67 by PCGS. And this one sold for $2,178 and one penny. Oh, yeah, someone threw in a little penny action in there to get in over the uh, previous bidder. 
Uh, but there you go. A uh, pretty nice coin. Uh, the Blast White is just crazy. It obviously came from a BU roll or something like that. Um, the no toning part is kind of strange and weird, uh, which might lead me to believe that the coin was probably dipped before it was submit, submitted to uh, the graders. But I don't know. It's a, it's a re relatively clean uh, coin uh, in all regards. Again, the $2,100 price tag, is it justified? I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's an uber, uber, uh, very plentiful coin. It's just tough to find without all the nicks and scratches. So here's another coin with some originality, a coin with color. It's a 52 uh, Philadelphia minted piece here. This one is a Mint State 67 Plus through PCGS. Uh, pretty crazy uh, <laughs> that a coin this common would grade so high, uh, considering that there was many of these produced. And it was a period of time where, you know, the, just the quality control wasn't the greatest. Uh, but this one right here with the originality sold for $1,296. Pretty nuts. And here's another one here, 48D. <coughs> now, I'm telling you this right now. <clears throat> I had talked about coins that were trending going into the summer. 1930s and 1940s Washington Quarters are one of those like coins that you need to kind of keep a close eye on maybe not specifically the key date 32 d's and s's but everything else around it is is like a new target all of a sudden and i've seen this weird trend here again in the last 60 days to 90 days and it just seems that if there's any sort of originality on these earlier coins at a high mid state grade all of a sudden, they're getting scooped up for probably money that's like 20% more than the normal. So this one right here, 67 plus, it's got some pretty nice original toning. Sold for $1,047.55. Um, the late 40s is a couple of dates that are ripe with high quality coins. And then uh, finally, we got a 1946 example here. This is a Sunset Providence piece. This is part of number 109 in the series. Uh, but this one here is, again, another big, huge bombshell. It's a Mint State 67 Plus uh, example. It's got some original, original toning, which obviously gives it some extra consideration in the grading department. Uh, but this one right here sold for $2,646. We're almost done, guys. We got a couple candy half dollars to discuss, believe it or not. The first one on the list is a 71S. It's clad. It's not silver. It's a common coin to find, even in Ultra Cameo. But how common can it be in Proof 69? <laughs> that, that's the only question. Now, this one is NGC graded. Uh, it's an extraordinarily high graded example. Um, and for that, it sold for $1,912.50. Uh, this is nothing that you're going to find in any one of the more, you know, any one of the proof sets out there. Uh, these things are usually spotted or they have a lot of dust on them or haze, uh, you know, which uh, plays a huge part in the actual grade of the thing. But um, this is a pretty nice example. And finally, another coin with color. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, 40%, 1969 D, silver. Candy half dollar is going to round out the list. Now, this one is a PCGS Mid-State 67. It's a pretty decent grade by all accounts. Um, this one has all the textbook looks of it. an end roll coin. You have one-sided that's completely covered in just beautiful toning. And the reverse is just plain blast white. So... Um, this one is uh, definitely nice. Uh, the toning could have been a little bit more even on the front, but you know that's that's all preference again. This one sold for two thousand four hundred seventy-five dollars, uh, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to round out the Monday market report. I want to thank you guys for watching as always, and thank you for all the support as always. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell for instant notifications uh, so that way you can gain first-hand access to all of the newest Blue Ridge coin news and great stuff. I'm your host, Sean, with Blue Ridge Silverhound. I hope you guys have a great start to your week. Don't work too hard. Be safe out there, friends, and we will see you on the next 
Coin Video. You guys take care now.